Hello, uh, I'm Tom Suzuki from University of Tokyo. I'm a biochemist in the field of RNA biology. Uh, today, I'm, uh, I'm talking about our project of nanopore tRNA sequencing. I'm happy to share some of the results and achievement from our project. So in the imaging field of transcriptomics, uh, we have learned that RNA modification provides chemical diversity to simple RNA molecules, yielding a greater range of biological functions. tRNA modifications are well studied for more than half a century. These modifications are required for proper functions of tRNA, in particular, accurate decoding of genetic code. mRNA also have several modifications, including fibrin cap structure, M6A, and inosine, and so on. RNA modification confers uh, physical chemical properties on uh, RNA molecules, and they play a wide variety of functions as shown here. So this is a comparison of uh, human tRNA modification between cytoplasm and the mitochondria. More than 40 types of chemical modifications are found in cytoplasm tRNA, uh, while 80, 18 types of modification are found in mitochondrial tRNAs. So 19% of tRNA residues are modified in cytoplasm tRNA, whereas 8.7% uh, of tRNA residues are modified in mitochondrial tRNA. So cytoplasm tRNAs are heavily decorated with diverse modification when compared to the mitochondrial tRNA. So let me explain why tRNA modifications are so important. So uh, steady state level of tRNA and its modification status are dynamically regulated in various cells and tissues under uh, uh, environmental conditions. And the alteration of tRNA modification regulate translation uh, affecting protein production. Uh, optimal translation mediated by tRNA modification uh, plays a key role in mRNA stability and the proteostasis. And the aberrant tRNA modification causes human disease. Uh, we call it RNA monopathy. So tRNA expression level and the modification status uh, directly regulate gene expression. So uh, NGS-based methods are widely available for tRNA sequencing and profiling. So this is based on the sequencing of our cDNA library prepared by reverse transcription and the PCR application of tRNAs. This method is capable of detecting several tRNA modification based on RT stop signature and or missing cooperation at the modification site during cDNA conversion. However, it is only applied to specific tRNA modification because most of the information from the tRNA modification are eliminated during cDNA conversion. In contrast, uh, nanopore sequencing is a unique method capable of directly analyzing RNA molecules without cDNA conversion. So it can potentially detect all tRNA modifications. We carried out nanopore sequencing of tRNAs and observe uh, characteristic ion current signals derived from RNA modifications when a modified RNA strand passes through the nanopore protein. So we studied a project of tRNA profiling using nanopore sequencer in co collaboration with uh, Hiroki Ueda's laboratory in University of Tokyo, because Hiroki is an excellent biomedician. So uh, this is a basic concept of, of our project. First, we prepare total tRNAs uh, from the target cells, tissues, or clinical specimen, followed by adapter ligation. Second, total tRNA were uh, subject to the nanopore sequencer to obtain the uh, ion current signals derived from different tRNA species. So each signal corresponds to each tRNA species, but it's very difficult to assign these signals by available base color like a GAPI, because GAPI does not deal with tRNA modification. So we try to develop an algorithm to assign these signal accurately using deep learning approach. So we call this algorithm a uh, classifier. Then we can profile the cellular tRNA as shown here. And finally, we try to measure the frequency of uh, each tRNA modification using a different algorithm uh, called detector. 
So in the first approach, we try to classify E. coli TRNAs because there are only 48 TRNA species encoded in human uh, E. coli genome. But we can isolate uh, 44 species because the other four species are isodecoders with similar sequence. And the all TRNA modifications have been mapped already. So this is a nanopore sequencing of E. coli TRNA, which was base code by GAPI. Uh, as you can see, many mismatches and the deletions are observed in the region where modifications are clustered because GAPI does not deal with uh, complex RNA modification. And then we tested mapping accuracy of the E. coli TNA with this approach and found 75% in average, suggesting that the conventional method is not available for profiling several TNAs. And also, we compare the mapping result of the particular TNA uh, from a uh, wild type E. coli cell and each of NOCA strain for TRNA modifying enzyme. Uh, for example, in the case of uh, dihydroreurgine at position 17, we detected uh, missed codes at nearby site of the modification. Uh, this is due to uh, misalignment of the signal uh, by the base core and they, it disappeared in the DASB knockout cells. When we look at uh, the other modification, MCMO5U, uh, uh, which is a complex modification, it has a couple of intermediate in the biogenesis of this modification. This modification affects uh, surrounding region. Uh, when we knock out CMOM, which is responsible for the terminal maturation of uh, MCMO5U. So CMO5U appears in this NOCA cell. However, we observed uh, alteration of ion current signals at the downstream position of this modification. So this is the apparent uh, limitation of available base CORA to decipher TRL modifications. So we developed the classifier for E. coli TRNA. First, we isolated all 44 species of E. coli TRNA by reciprocal circulating chromatography method, which was developed in my laboratory. And the purity of each TRNA was confirmed by mass spec, uh, followed by adapter ligation. Each TRNA was nanopore sequenced to obtain sufficient amount of ion current signals. And uh, all 44 TRNA data set was subject to the deep learning approach using a one-dimensional convolutional neural network to develop TRNA classifier. We examined and uh, optimized various models and established a learning model with uh, 107 layers. Then we successfully developed a TRNA classifier with highest accuracy. 98% in average, it's much uh, improved compared to the existing method using GAPI base core. So this is now a practical level for TRNA profiling. Our goal is to quantify each TRN species absolutely, not measuring relative change of TRN abundance. To this end, we need to correct the bias of the read counts of TRN sequence. As shown in the previous slide, we isolated uh, each individual TRN with highest purity. So we can mix uh, all uh, 44 species of TRN with equal uh, molecules to give an uh, Ekimura mixture uh, of total TNA species, uh, we call it 44 mix. Then we prepare the sequence library of total TNA or 44 mix. After the uh, first adapter ligation, each sample was divided into half. And one is for uh, Illumina sequencing, the other is for nanopore sequencing. So in each uh, sequence platform, read counts of the each TNA in total TRNA was normalized by read counts of 44 mix because uh, there is a huge variation in the read counts between TRNA species. So this is our first TRNA profiling by nanopore sequencing and the TRNA classifier. We confirmed a uh, high reproducibility of the biological replicate. Uh, as you can see, there is a huge difference in TRNA abundance between TRNA species. Uh, TRNA glycine is the most abundant one. Uh, TRNA sec, uh, serenocysteine TRNA is the least one. So there is a 
74, uh, 76 fold difference in the TRN abundance. Then we compare the TRN profiling between uh, Illumina sequencing and nanopore sequencing. As you can see, it shows a good correlation between the two sequencing platforms, indicating that TRN profiling by nanopore sequencing works very well. Uh, without normalization with the 44 mixture, poor correlation was observed. So normalization of tRNA counts by Ekimura mixture is necessary to profile cellular tRNAs. So we next profiled E. coli tRNAs from different culture conditions and compared tRNA abundance. So we can see alteration of tRNA abundance in different culture media, LB versus uh, M9. So uh, these tRNA species are upregulated in the M9 medium. And uh, this is a tRNA profiling in different uh, growth uh, phases, uh, stationary phase versus uh, log phase. And uh, these tRNAs are downregulated in log phase when compared to the stationary phase. Uh, we can also profile tRNA from knockout strain of uh, Psi-I, which encodes tRNA modifying enzyme responsible for foci urogens. A subset of tRNA uh, species uh, decreased significantly in the knockout cell. They all have a foci urogen. So this modification is required for cellular stabilization of these tRNA species. Uh, we next try to develop a, a detector to detect a specific TRNA modification and measure its frequency. To this end, uh, we first uh, chose a shield urogen at position 55 because shield urogen is a mass silent modification. It's very difficult to detect it by mass spec. We isolated a hypermodified TRNA lacking shield urogen 55 uh, from the Truby uh, knockout strain. Then it was not a sequence for deep running two data set of wiretap tRNA and the three knockout tRNA were trained with a convolutional neural network to generate a detector for shield urine 55. Then we tested the accuracy of the detector and found that the detector is able to detect shield urine 55 with high accuracy, indicating that neural network successfully distinguishes single tRNA modification. Then we mixed uh, wild-type tRNA and the hypermodified tRNA with a different ratio, and then they were sequenced and subjected to the detector. As you can see, uh, the detector uh, uh, nicely quantified the frequency of using 55 in proportion to the mixing ratio of the sample. So nanopore sequencing is an uh, ideal method capable of measuring specific tRNA modification. And finally, I want to share our latest result of the detector. Uh, we are now comparing ion current signals uh, directly between wild type tRNA and the hypermodified tRNA from uh, knockout strain for specific tRNA modification. Uh, as you can see, we can detect most of the tRNA modifications. So we are very optimistic to develop a practical detector for any types of uh, tRNA modification in this line of approaches. For the next time, I want to share uh, this approach uh, in more details. OK, I want to thank uh, people in my laboratory, uh, in particular, uh, Ryo Noguchi and Mai Maeda, uh, who carried out uh, most of the experimental part in this project. And uh, this project is uh, uh, also cross collaboration with Hiroki Ueda's laboratory, who greatly contributed to in silico part of uh, TRNA classifier and the detector. And I also thank Shupei Okada for his kind help to set up this project. And uh, special thanks are due to Mark Akeson for his kind support and our fruitful discussion on nanopore sequencing of TRNAs. And I also thank uh, funding sources. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>